Well, 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 what a fantastic way to start off the day and to start off ATB Financial's annual public meeting. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ATB Financial Financial's annual public meeting for the financial year, ending March 31st, 2021. My name is Harner Ian Singh, and I'm a host and play-by-play -play commentator with Rogers Sportsnet and Hockey Night in Canada. And I am very proud to say I am a very proud ATB ambassador. Just uh, recently, I had the chance to join a Team ATB and I just love the positivity. I've uh, it's been fantastic already to be a part of some events, and I I just have learned a lot about how great this institution is, and I'm looking forward to being a part of a whole lot more in the coming year. So let's get this started. Last year, COVID forced us to take our annual public online a meeting online, and we had hoped that we could be in person together this year, but we weren't quite ready for that. And so a big thank you, though, we want to send out to our ATB clients, provincial and federal government officials, Alberta's business leaders, community partners, ATB's board of directors, and of course, team members who are joining us online today. In just a few minutes, you'll hear from the chair of ATB Financial's board of directors, Joan Hertz our Chief Financial Officer, Dan Hugo, and President and CEO, Curtis Stange. Following their remarks, we'll answer any questions that you have, uh, that any of you viewers have. And so I'll like to, this is the first reminder you'll get, I'll remind you later on as well, but you can type those questions in the chat on the right-hand side of your screen. As we all know, the last year was quite remarkable for so many reasons, and Albertans adapted through this pandemic. And it was ATB's privilege to support thousands of you through challenges in your lives and with your businesses. And ATB did so beyond typical financial support. Here's just one way that we supported the well being of Albertans. <music> For many Albertans, the pandemic and its many challenges have increased the need for mental health support. It has also highlighted the unique ways that organizations like ATB can do to help uplift the well-being of Albertans. That's why we released the ATB Up campaign in support of Albertans' mental health. Since March 1st, we've released 10 fun challenges for Albertans to participate in. Whether it's showing off a dance move, wearing all your pandemic outfits at once, or my favorite, the trick shot. These challenges were meant to create moments of play in our day and trigger donations from ATB to the Mental Health Foundation of Alberta and several other not-for-profits. I must say, I've really enjoyed seeing these daily posts. Here are some of my faves. Way to go, Alberta. Thank you for all your support and participation in the ATB Up challenges to raise money for the Mental Health Foundation of Alberta. Together in just two weeks, we have raised $125,000, more than doubling our initial goal of $50,000. These funds will go towards programs, sessions, and tools to support the mental health of Albertans. We were also able to uplift a few other not-for-profits. From our Layer Up Challenge, we saw 1,275 articles of clothing donated to four organizations across the province. Because of our Toss Up Challenge, 240 Indigenous youth in Alberta will receive a month of sport and play programming. And our Dish Up Challenge delivered over 1,400 meals across Lethbridge, Grand Prairie, Calgary, and Edmonton. Together, we are making a real difference for Albertans and having some fun at the same time. At ATB, we are dedicated to creating a brighter future and helping to raise the overall well-being of Albertans. ATB Up is just one of the many ways we plan on doing that. It's all part of our long-term effort to help solve some of society's greatest challenges. We call it greater good. And we are beyond excited for the journey ahead. Join us. Well, thank you to everyone who participated in ATB Up. In doing so, you helped support mental health right here in Alberta. And I just want to add that it's just fantastic to see all of these initiatives that are being implemented by ATB because you can really tell how much uh, those are needed and how much of an impact that they are having and going to have in the future. 
Uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce ATB's board chair, Joan Hertz. Along with her role with ATB's board, Joan is a corporate commercial lawyer and strategic consultant. She serves as the chair of the board, <coughs> excuse me, for the Edmonton International Airport, vice chair for Covenant Health, and she was recently appointed as a board member for the Alberta Machine Intelligence Institute. Joan, over to you. Thanks, Hannah Ryan. It's great to be here with you today, virtually, to bring greetings on behalf of our board. So the COVID-19 pandemic meant last year's annual public meeting also had to be delivered virtually, so we'll hopefully second time's the charm. Much as we'd like to be in person with you, one positive about this virtual setting is we've been able to reach some of you who might not otherwise be able to join us. So thanks for being here. We'll do our best to engage you, and if we fail, uh, Curtis is prepared to add an interpretive dance to the end of the program. <laughs> Didn't tell him that. So, as we have people joining us from all over this great province of Alberta, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional territories in Alberta of the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. We may be gathering virtually today, but we must still acknowledge our past and our promises. I'd also like to acknowledge my colleagues on the ATP Financial Board of Directors and thank them for joining us today. Vice Chair and Chair of Audit Committee, Barry James, Risk Committee Chair, Mary Ellen Nielsen, Governance Committee Chair, Diane Petty, Human Resources Committee Chair, Wendy Henkelman, and Board Members, Diane Brickner, Andy Fraser, Robert Logan, Patrick Lohr, Manjeet Minhas, Jim Davidson, Robert Pierce, and Todd Pruden. When I think back on the past year, the words of Seneca come to mind, so here goes some Latin. Ignis aurum probat miseria fortes viros, which translates to fire tests gold and adversity tests the strong. The COVID-19 global pandemic has tested the strength of every Albertan. And while the pandemic affected everyone, not everyone was affected in the same way. At annual meetings like this, it's good to take a moment to think back to what things looked like a year ago. So put yourself back in spring of 2020. We were facing a pretty dark reality. The pandemic was in its early stages, lockdowns were starting, but remember the talk was of them only lasting a few weeks. Crude oil prices were in a deep decline. Everything was very uncertain. And let's be honest, many of us were a lot slipper and a little better groomed. But what actually happened over this past year was devastating to our economy, and many of our clients were under incredible stress. But over the year, ATB showed up. As it has over its 82-year history, we showed up by providing stability and a place where Albertans could come for support and advice. We showed up by proactively reaching out, calling our clients to help them make the right decision for their unique situations, providing some with reassurance, some with complex advice, and sadly for some, helping make some very difficult decisions. We also showed up with leading technology and innovation. We had built a solid systems foundation, so we were able to pivot and leverage artificial intelligence. This meant we were able to quickly deliver CBA, the Canadian Emergency Business Account Payments. Take 948 Brewing Company in Airdrie. They opened their doors on March 14th, 2020 and were open to the public for a grand total of four hours before they needed to shut down. But because of our online SEBA application and an ATB team member who made sure they knew about the program, they were able to apply quickly for funds to help them pivot their business model and led Dave from 948 to say, I've had takeout food orders that were more complicated. Our ability to help clients like Dave was thanks to our previous decisions to wisely invest in technology and to the agile, innovative team at ATB delivering what customers needed. The challenge that COVID-19 brought was not the only challenge this past year. Boards across the world were faced with massive waves of change in the areas of diversity and inclusion and social justice, environmental, social and governance, or ESG, and exponential advances in data and technology. Our board provided leadership to these challenges and we rededicated ourselves to continuous learning and tangible improvement on these important issues. Our board takes ESG seriously. Through a uniquely Albertan and ATB way, we are committed to ESG principles 
and creating long-term value through our environmental, social, governance, and economic considerations. As I said, we began the year with a very negative economic outlook and a lot of uncertainty. But as our results show, we are ending the year having delivered on our purpose and why we exist, which is to make it possible for our clients. For this, the credit goes to our amazing ATB team members, and I'd like to thank them now. I recognize this has been a tough year personally for everyone. And yet, as a team, through your hard work, dedication, and perseverance, ATB has been able to deliver record-breaking results for our shareholder and a way forward for our clients. Thank you to our CEO, Curtis Dange, and our talented executive team, whose leadership provided the needed guidance in the face of a very challenging year. You delivered. So cheers to you. You can take the afternoon off. <laughs> I think I made Curtis flinch there. I would also like to thank the ATB board for their hard work and dedication this past year. In the crisis, in the uncertainty, the diverse backgrounds and experience and depth of knowledge of our board of directors mattered more than ever. So I thank them for bringing their time and their talents to the benefit of ATB. This year in June, Todd Pruden will be retiring from the board and I wish to thank him for his service and dedication to making ATB what it is today. And today I'm pleased to announce that both Barry James and Patrick Lohr will be reappointed to the board. The road beyond the pandemic is not certain, but it is getting clearer. It's times like this that ATB's reason for existing is clear. ATB was built to help Albertans then, now, and always. We're optimistic about the recovery of the economy and ATB will be here working with you to make it possible. So thanks for joining us. Please stick around at the end for the Q&A or please reach out to me or any of us if you have feedback or ideas of how to make ATB even better. All right, thank you very much, Joan. And you mentioned that there are people watching from all over this great province. And uh, I, I have a very close uh, connection here. I was born in Wetaskiwin and then uh, I grew up in Brooks, lived in Calgary, now live in Chestermere. I have family who lived in Grand Prairie, friends in Red Deer, and now family who live in St. Albert. I'm sure there's a bunch more connections I could find too, but yes, there are people watching from all over Alberta and that is just uh, tremendous. That is awesome. So next up, ATB's Chief Financial Officer, Dan Hugo is joining us. And Dan has been ATB's CFO since January of 2020. His 30 years of experience has gained him an expert knowledge base in all things financial. He has a proven track record of growing businesses and finding innovation, innovative solutions to modern day business challenges. Over to you, Dan. Thank you, Arna Ryan, and good morning all. Looking back over the past year, I'm filled with a deep sense of pride and sincere appreciation for the accomplishments of all of the ATB team members. In a year like no other, a year that forever will be memorialized in the annals of history, ATB team members rose to the occasion and delivered remarkable outcomes. These outcomes not only included outstanding financial results, but spanned a broader range of activities where ATB was truly there for Albertans and Albertan businesses during this challenging year. This year brought with it a level of trepidation and uncertainty that I've not seen in my 30 year career. It was filled with uncertainty around our general well being an uneasiness about the survival of the economy and high levels of stress about the availability of liquidity in the market, especially in the early months of the pandemic. ATB embraced these challenges head on and ended the year in a much stronger position than where it started. It, in a very unusual year, ATB delivered extraordinary financial results. On the top line, we generated record revenues of 1.78 billion, while at the same time balancing it with a laser focus on expense management. This allowed us to improve the efficiency ratio to 69.4% and delivered record net income before provision of 545 million. 
we have seen some stabilization in economic outlook and our loan loss provision decreased by 115 million compared to the prior year. This resulted in net income of $211 million, an increase of more than $100 million year over year. However, these results should not be seen in isolation, but the culmination of a long history of continued growth. In fact, since 2012, net income before provision grew from 208 million to 545 million a compound annual growth rate of more than 11% during that time period. Although there remains substantial uncertainty about the speed of the economic recovery, we are bullish about the future of ATB. In a testament to ATB's strength and resiliency, we were able to improve our capital and liquidity positions this year. We dynamically optimized our balance sheet to adapt to the fast and ever-changing conditions. We repriced our loan book and de-emphasized expensive funding sources, such as credit card securitization. This proactive approach allowed us to increase our net interest margin by 31 basis points, whereas our Canadian peers on average showed a decrease of seven basis points during the year. Alberta has always been there for Albertans and Albertan businesses, and it's never been more true than this year. During the height of the initial lockdowns, we implemented a number of relief and deferral programs to help our clients navigate the uncertain times. We also originated more than $1.3 billion or 21,000 loans under the CBA and the BCAP programs to provide much needed, lead, much needed liquidity to our clients. In fact, we were one of the first financial institutions in Canada to offer access to the CBA programs. As we look into the future, a high level of uncertainty remains as the race between the spread of new COVID variants and the rollout of the vaccine continues to ebb and flow. As the vaccine rollout reaches critical mass, we expect that Alberta's economy will start reopening later this summer. The K-shaped economic recovery will present different opportunities, but also challenges for Albertans, depending on which side of the K they reside. Although there will be challenges with this uneven recovery, ATB will continue to be there for Albertans every step of the way, just like we have done since 1938. Sorry, my mic was muted, but thank you very much, Dan, for explaining the financials to us. I'm not a numbers guy, but I can tell uh, from what you were saying and from those slides that ATB is on the up and up, and that is beautiful to see. Uh, last but not least, today we're going to hear from ATB's president and CEO, Curtis Stange. Curtis is passionate about all things Alberta and firmly believes that anything is possible through the expertise, creativity, and dedication of the 5,000 member team of a at ATB Financial, the 5,000 team members at ATB Financial. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, with more than 30 years of experience in financial services touching every major Canadian province, Curtis feels strongly that Alberta is an economic powerhouse with incredible investment opportunities, and that this is our moment to reshape Alberta's future economy. Curtis, it's all yours. Well, thank you, Harner Ryan. What an incredible morning to spend with all of you. You are the reason we exist at ATB, and I'm grateful for your commitment to this Alberta-built organization. To our clients, thank you for trusting us along your journey and what a journey it's been. At our core is an unwavering belief that anything is possible, and our year-end results are a testament to that. Like every other organization in Alberta and across the globe, we were thrust into this crisis mode at the start of our fiscal year. We needed to quickly support the physical and psychological safety of our team members, 
rapidly deploy emergency relief to our clients and their businesses and ensure as Alberta's bank, our own liquidity and capital levels were secure and in a position to be able to serve our clients throughout this highly complex and unprecedented time. This wasn't an easy year, but I struggle to find the right adjective to describe it because one word could not possibly capture the fiscal year that was. But I know for certain that because of those struggles or perhaps despite of them, we are a stronger, more resilient company. And just as Dan mentioned, our balance sheet is really strong and we're really proud of our continued growth in revenue and our ability to manage cost. Throughout the year, our ATB capital markets became active in mergers and acquisitions and the sourcing of debt and equity capital for our clients. We established a leadership role in life sciences sector, reaching top market share positions in both Canada and the United States. And we've broadened our sector expertise to focus on innovation to help Alberta technology companies navigate a disruptive marketplace and compete globally for capital. During a time of great uncertainty, our team members showed up with passion and commitment every day to service our clients in the branches and call centers as an essential service for Albertans. And our investment management arm, ATB Wealth, also performed exceptionally well, helping our clients continue to meet their financial goals during this time of incredible uncertainty. Our assets under administration at 25 billion represent a $5 billion increase from last year. Also this year, we honed our digital skills to better support our clients. And we've elevated our expertise on all things Alberta, providing personalized advice and solutions during a time when our clients needed it most. And humbly, as a team, we also reflected on our own diversity and inclusion and the need to continue building a psychologically safe workplace at ATB and we are committed to mitigating bias and breaking down barriers for our black, indigenous, and otherwise racialized communities and becoming an organization where all team members belong. We could not be in a better position as an organization, truly. I am thankful for our 5,000 team members who continue to display resilience and optimism and carry this unwavering belief that anything is possible. It is because of our team members that ATB is in a position of strength and being in a position of strength as Alberta's bank is incredibly important. We need a strong financial services sector based right here in Alberta more than ever to aid in the province's economic recovery. A strong financial services sector means more innovation, more competition, and ultimately more focus on the client. At ATB, that meant becoming one of the first institutions in Canada to automate federal relief payments during the lockdown. We were able to di distribute urgently needed funds to Albertans and their businesses in days, not weeks. It meant spending more time, not less, with our clients. We proactively reached out to tens of thousands of Albertans that needed us. They needed our guidance, our advice, and at times, just an ear to listen. Many of our clients had stories that were gut-wrenching, trying to best unwind their business, recover from job loss, and deal with this massive amount of uncertainty. We we're also part of stories that were inspirational as our clients created new paths for themselves. They took risks, they changed careers, they built new businesses. Albertans have this competitive grit, this courage to achieve remarkable things and I consider myself extremely fortunate to live in Alberta, work for an Alberta-built company, and be in a position to move our province forward to a brighter future. 4.4 million people call Alberta home. We are incredibly hardworking, highly educated, and very proud of our province. We know that we have what it takes to be successful again, and we are all excited and anxious to prove it. But as diverse as our people and our landscapes are, so too must our economic recovery be. We are uniquely affected by this triple impact of COVID, the oil price collapse, and market volatility. And we are uniquely positioned to come out of it. 
This is our moment to reshape Alberta's economy, build off of everything that has made the province successful in the past and grow forward. Think about how you've navigated these past 14 months. This digitization of how we live our lives has rapidly accelerated. Consider how you've ordered your groceries or your clothes online, camping equipment, eyeglasses, how you've renewed your mortgage and insurance, how you've moved money to your sister overseas or your nephew down the street. We are living in a digital economy and positioning Alberta at the center of innovation will be critical to embracing it. Digitizing Alberta is a must. We have an opportunity directly in front of us and it would be quite frankly damaging to our economy and our future if we let this opportunity pass us by. Alberta can become the destination for embracing the digital economy. Think about smart cities, health, education. Look at smart agriculture and energy. We have a strong foundation in place already, but we must double down. We have to reskill our workforce. We have to work extremely hard to break down barriers and attract the world's best talent. And we must create an environment where Alberta is known worldwide for solving the problems of the future. We are well positioned to capture this opportunity. With the right focus and determination, we can make it possible. Alberta was built for moments, ATB was built for moments like this, as was Alberta. That calling first happened in 1938 for ATB as the economy was recovering from the Great Depression to provide hope for Albertans. Today, that calling is just as powerful. We do exist to make it possible. At ATB, we're ready for it. In fact, we've been preparing for it. Our clients are counting on us to be experts in our field, dependable providers of advice and solutions catered to them and to meet them where they are at living in a new digital economy. The year ahead promises many unknowns. However, ATB's commitment to our clients is unwavering. We are pledging to make a real difference in Alberta by leveraging our capabilities as financial experts and innovators and helping to solve some of the province's biggest challenges. Part of our economic recovery will be raising the collective well-being of all Albertans, an equitable and accessible recovery. If the past year has taught us anything, it's the importance of coming together as a community, supporting our friends and family, and lifting up our neighbors. While we've always been focused on helping Albertans through tough times, this year we're leveling up into something we call ATB's greater good. For many Albertans, the pandemic and economic challenges have increased the need for mental health support. We are committed to building healthier communities. And we know that access to education and technology are barriers for many Albertans. This is a time to lean in and help more people participate in our economy. We are joining forces with other Alberta companies in new and innovative ways, and I can't wait to share more. Today's level of uncertainty and intensity will not last forever. The economy will grow. Stability will come. We can already feel the momentum building. And ATB will be there, highly attuned to the signals of Alberta's business sector, able to catch and lead the province's growth and act as a positive catalyst as we transition into a digital economy. ATB was built to help Albertans and that commitment holds just as true today as we look to the brighter future we know lies ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Curtis, for those um, you know words of providing hope and inspiration for what's obviously been a very difficult time for many Albertans through the pandemic, but uh, thank you so much for that. And just a reminder to everyone, uh, that you can post your questions on the right hand side of your screen and we're going to do our best to answer as many of them as we can. I'm going to start things off, Curtis. Uh, I know yeah, you're a financial expert, but I also know you're a hockey fan. So who's going to win the Stanley Cup? <laughs> you know, Hearn and Ryan, is there any other team than the Edmonton Oilers in the Stanley Cup? I mean, you have to, right? We are 
poised. Uh, we have great coaching, great team, passion, energy, and the, 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 the force of over a million Edmontonians and people all across the province supporting for the Oilers. So the Oilers are going to do it. The uh, the Albertan answer there. That's that's right. Okay. Um, so first of all, uh, Curtis, um, what are you most proud of during this past year? Through everything ATB's done, through what what what's gone on, what makes you most proud? For 82 years, and as Joan mentioned in her uh, remarks, for 82 years, uh, ATB has been here for the province and the ups and downs and the volatility that this incredible province has to offer. So I am the most proud of the fact that our 5,000 team members showed up every day with passion and commitment to making it possible for Albertans in this tough time. And then I'm incredibly proud of how those 5,000 team members supported the Albertans and the Alberta business owners through some incredibly volatile and emotional times. So, you know, the pride is deeply rooted in our 5,000 team members and the fact that we've been consistently for 82 years, and again, this year, like no other, show up for Albertans in ways that simply no other financial institution can. All right, so what most surprised you about this uh, year? Hmm. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's as much as of a surprise, but the resilience, the resilience of Albertans. And again, I think Albertans have proven this through you know, since 1905, since we've become a province, this over 100 and some years, that through the, any economic challenge, through any pandemic, as we've learned now, Albertans are resilient, they're inspirational, they're entrepreneurial, and they just simply react to whatever comes their way to be there for Albertans. And again, that resilience extends right into our, you know, 5,000 team members. So again, it's not as much a surprise as it is a, a wow that again, once again, Alberta is gonna come through these incredible triple impact on our province and we will be absolutely stronger for it. Okay, so we have a question now from uh, Alwyn D'Souza. Uh, would ATB as an organization be able to utilize the Alberta Jobs Now program to invest in team members so that they can acquire new skills and better serve our clients evolving needs? Thanks, Alwyn, for that question. What a great program for the province to come out with. And I know it's expected to, to create several hundred thousand jobs, really proactively supporting uh, the cost of new jobs uh, for the businesses, which is a great idea. So we'll be there to help support businesses. We won't look at participating in that program ourselves, uh, but we will be there to support businesses that certainly do look to us to provide capital, much needed growth capital to expand, uh, there's lots of new opportunity for in businesses. Thousands of Alberta businesses start every single month, and we are there to help uh, build uh, Alberta back as the economy opens back up, and we'll continue to do so for Alberta businesses. All right. Um, thank you very much, Curtis. Thank you to everyone. Uh, and I just want to thank everyone for joining us today to hear from ATB Financial's leadership on the fiscal year that was 2021. If you want to read ATB's combined annual and corporate social responsibility report, you can view it live at annualreport.atb.com. Uh, make sure you have a great Victoria Day long weekend. I know there's uh, an Edmonton Oilers playoff game tonight against the Winnipeg Jets, so you might want to tune into that. Stay safe, wash your hands. Hopefully next year we can all meet together in person. It was my pleasure to host today's events. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, and once again, stay safe and we'll see you hopefully next year in person.